हमारे गेमर्स का दिमाग कुछ ठंडा हो चुका है बट द अरीना इज स्टिल बजिंग विद एनर्जी सो विदाउट वेस्टिंग अ सेकेंड ऑफ दिस इलेक्ट्रीफाइंग एनर्जी लेट्स मूव इन टू आर लास्ट एंड मोस्ट अनप्रडिक्टेबल गेम ऑफ द डे डोटा टू बाई वेल्व कॉरपोरेशन This is actually the first professional esports game on the new patch in Indian esports at least. Marksman versus Shadeels. I can't wait to see which captain has adapted better to the new meta. Yeah. Uh, it, that's really what it boils down to, right? Skill goes out the window at this point. It's about who's read the patch notes, who's done their research, and who knows what's what. Now, one interesting way to approach the new patch that we've seen a lot on the international circuit is to catch your opponents off guard. Which is to mount an early push and catch your opponent doing nothing right. the entire first <laughs> minute. Because one thing still remains constant across all patches, right? Creeps and towers still give you gold. The more of those you kill, the stronger you get as the game progresses. So mm -hmm. that's that's the uh, that's the base logic of this draft, I'd say, and that's probably what at least one of the two back. sides is going to go for. Right. So you you open by saying that skill goes out of the window, but the basics of Dota don't. Towers do not, of towers lead to buildings. Vision lets you take objectives. These basics must be noted and must be played, uh, uh, having kept in mind. It's also interesting to note that towers have more armor, yeah. so you might want magical pieces to help reach towers, or you might want to mount a huge push. Yeah. It's a little remaining. armor, but it's still significant. I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, I mean you do have creeps to help you out that basically go in right. when you pop the cliff, right? Yeah, that that is one of the most ridiculous things ever. I mean, you you're pushing, you pop the cliff. Everybody throws their spells and it creeps on that. So you have to be really careful as to who clears the wave. And I and I think you might see more and more fire positions just stay away from the battle and keep their fingers and their mouses hovering over the glyph indicator. There's a lot of interesting things, interesting hints that Ice Frog and the team at Valve Corp have actually pushed forward in this new patch, right? For for starters, we've got vector-based skills coming in. So a little bit on that. Pangolier, the new hero, he basically has a vector-based skill. It's remaining. a whole new mechanic without going into too many details. That could lead to a lot more new abilities and upgrades to current abilities coming out. Um, there's also the fact that you've got terrain-based abilities now. So right. Slada, for instance, sprints faster Radiant's inside the river, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. There's, I mean, the notes are like 30 Dyer's pages long. It's like reading, reading a legal contract at this point. Yeah, but it, it, it's something I, that I, I, every team has to do. It's not 30 pages long because I took a printout. It's 80 pages long. Jesus. This <laughs> is the first time since the seventh standard I've seen so many words on paper, and it's, oh, it, I, it's like. Preparing for your master's degree or something. I mean, all of us Ten haven't yet uh, understood it. Purge hasn't released his three-hour uh, video that Five explains the patch note and every single detail. It's going to take a while for teams to adapt, and this is when it's most interesting. The people, the teams rather, who understand the basics and who draft well are just going to end up winning. And marksmen, I see, what you're I see a marksman I prefer it to some extent, but but this could go either way. If the Earthshaker gets his blink, Sheridan's might be a little disheartened to get a lot of units and go pushing. And if the Sheridan's push uh, with their timings intact, they should be able to get objectives before the Earthshaker gets his blink. Yeah, yeah Sheridan's are made there, they want to push. I personally, well, the Earthshaker might be the most intuitive way to say, okay, we're going to counter push, we'll pick the Earthshaker. That logic only applies if he actually has his blink dagger online or has right. a way to get in position. Because with Sources of damage like the boar that are probably going to walk up the slope Ten looking for the earth shaker to cancel a potential blink dagger, and of course the Jakiro who's going to constantly Five be spitting out liquid fire and blue breaths and AOE. Add to that the fact that there's a hawk that's going to be keeping eyes and tabs on the earth shaker. I think this is one of those games where earth shaker isn't the right fit to stop a push, but it could work out only if Shadeels mess up. Marksmen, um, they're going to be looking for some more deep push. I don't know what they've got up their sleeves, but. They should know that the push is coming in, and they've got to be able to prepare for it. Yeah. So, one one way to try and stop the push is so look. There are two ways. Of, Dyer's oh, okay. Band Hold on. I'm going to get back to that a bit later. It's a night stalker pick up. I'm a bit surprised about this because night stalker did receive a small but sort of significant nerves. Mm -hmm. His uh, vision in uh, the daytime has been reduced. He had uh, quite a lot of vision in the daytime, so his daytime vision has been reduced. Uh, in seconds. addition to that, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that okay, that's not the I'm not even going to bother. But I know that daytime vision has been reduced. Talents have been changed every now and then. 
and um, <coughs> yeah, it's yeah. So data and vision has actually been reduced by 400. So that's for those quite of you wondering what we're doing, we're actually looking at the patch notes side by side right. to try and give you guys up-to-date information. The patch has literally just hit today morning, and we're still coming to terms with most of it as well. But yeah, Night Stalkers. A hero that's a bit situational, let's say now. Because he's no longer band. that supreme beast that he once was, dominating lanes across the map. Heck, we don't even know if a roaming 4 is still a thing in the new meta. For all we know, we could be reverting back to the old 2 1 2 style of Rona. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I mean, they're making strong cases for Pudge as well as Slark to be roaming 4s. With where bounty runes are positioned somewhat close to the river. Uh, both the Slara remaining. and the Pudge usually benefit from this. If I'm not mistaken, Bounty Runes give more EXP right now. However, they may be positioned closer to the river, but they're still positioned on the on high, high ground, ground yeah. which is sort of a cash 22. It's a risk. So if, if you got that ward uh, looking over the dire safe lane and imagine you're a Radiant Slara, you still have vision if supports are coming to contest the rune. So that ward is going to be crucial. That's why I said, e I mean, the meta must have changed, but the band. basics are still intact. Yeah. So good vision is going to be really crucial and it's going to guide a lot of decisions made by either side here. Uh, I like the Night Stalker pickup in the sense that if the Beastmaster doesn't get off to a good start and has died multiple times and is just holding on to boots, a possible boots upgrade is under leveled, is supposed to jungle without an iron talent, then... But, then I mean, th look, what is the shit do you have to do at this point when they want to push? Stay alive till your level 6 has come online and okay. of course, group up as 5 and just go tower to tower. Okay. In that Here's sense, you're playing fan. defensively for the first 8 minutes of the game, which is when the Night Stalker is really the most, well, he's extremely impactful. And if you play defensively, right. you counteract everything that the Night Stalker is throwing at you. Right. Post which, I don't think the Night Stalker brings much value when you're coming knocking on his towers. So no, he doesn't. On. If, it, I, I still think Sheridans have the upper hand with the draft. Um, Marksman needs some more deepers and they need some sort of high impact pick. core that comes online in the mid game. Sven is Warp. a hero that comes to mind. Sven's been banned by the marksmen themselves. Oh, they actually banned it themselves. That's interesting. Co-op? Yeah. Can't really uh, say much against the co-op here. Still a Ten really important thing. She did get some changes to her as well. I believe it was the AoE on the Shadow Strike that's been Five increased now. Five seconds uh, remaining. No, it to comes in as a talented level 20. Uh, okay. It's a 660 AoE Shadow Strike. Uh, and a choice between that Dyer's and uh, spell life. <sighs> yeah, so you get a 650 AoE Shadow Strike or 30% spell life steal. So Viper comes in. We're going to see the new Nether Toxin in action, Yuck. by the way. <laughs> Is the meta so green? That's I mean, some things never change. Ten seconds. The Marksman going with the Viper, it's still not that super high impact core that Five we talked about. Five seconds remaining. But it's something that can hold its own in the mid game. Problem is with with a multi-unit push coming out with the Beastmaster, Viper is not the most efficient at dealing with them. One of the major changes to the Viper or uh, to the Beastmaster is that he now pulls out an, a random neutral creep among the top. At level users. at level four of the Call of the Wild, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. <coughs> Lots of changes to the Viper, by the way. We'll give you an update on that as the game gets underway. But Sheridals, they've gone with the Clockwork as their third pick. What's their fourth looking like? It still seems like they're missing a middle laner and a core or a carry. On the side of Sheridals? Mm -hmm. I actually like this Clockwork pickup. Um, he's still a good four. Nothing much has changed. Uh, you have another source of initiation. Uh, it's interesting and it's minuscule, but if this does go late game, Rocket Flare grants uh, True Sight at level 25. That's the talent you have as an option, which is okay. actually quite ridiculous if you think about it. Radiant yeah, turn I mean, to if it's True Sight versus Observer yeah. as well, that's ridiculous. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, there, there you go. Just checking. Rocket Flare, True Sight. Dire Apex span as well. now. But Disruptor. Level, a level yeah, talent. Yeah, so it is, but then, but then Vision should be yours with the Beastmaster and a Clockwork. True. The shop is going to be picked from Marksman. I think this Mirana is a little bit of an indulgence. I've been seeing her in my pubs. Look, the question in my lips right now is where the hell is the wave? Ten to the seconds. Who kills creeps before they enter the base and Sheridan starts doing massive damage Five on the tower? Seconds I mean, you're remaining. hoping for the Echo Star. That's, that's about it. I'm not convinced by this. And and you did mention the rework Nether Toxin. So, Nether Toxin... Oh, yeah. Forgot about that. Nether it's toxin an AOE. It applies break. 
Uh, I don't understand, and I'm actually afraid to see this in action. Got 900 casting, so they need to be. Uh, it's got a five-second cooldown, and a, this is broken, man. Yeah, I mean, you, Viper, in my opinion, just gets a little more broken now because he has more utility, utility beyond just the lane. That's 50 damage seconds. per second for eight seconds, which is technically what 400 magic damage. Five in an AOE seconds. with Blake it and be? guess what, you can spam it halfway through. Because the cooldown is 5 but the duration is 8. Hmm. How is that fair? The mana cost is just 75. I mean, you go Hurricane Pike, you get a little extra mana from that 4 staff component and... Just lay out the poison all over the floor. Yep. You also got plus 8% spell lifesteal as a talent. Is Viper worse now? <laughs> He's worse. And Marksman did their homework. They picked up a hero that's just the absolute cancer of Dota right now. Is it is it enough in terms of AP though? I mean, I mean we'll have to see. 400 magic damage on the floor, spammable every five seconds. That's enough to stop a push by itself. Yeah. Throw a Fisher on top of that, and that's like the cherry on top. Mm -hmm. Well, final picks on the board for either side. We have the final bans coming out as well. It's going to be Phantom Assassin to be out by Marksman into a Spectre pickup. <laughs> Spectre still prevailing through metas for the Usai for League, apparently. Not entirely sure what the changes for the Spectre were in this particular patch. I mean, you have plus 15 desolate damage as a talent. I think that comes in at uh, level 10, if I'm not mistaken. I believe that was always there. 10 seconds. Uh, it's a level 10 talent. Yeah, I believe Five the talent was always there. Remaining. I may be mistaken. Okay. But, but what's interesting is that the desolate now applies a debuff that reduces the unit's vision for 5 seconds. That's an interesting mechanic. But 40%? 70% at max level. Why? Beats the living out of me. Choose your hero. What? Well, final pick from Sheridans is the Juggernaut. So the push has been augmented with some healing coming out from them as well. But I'm not entirely sold now. Sheridans, they kind of decided, okay, we may, we maybe we're going to push, but not entirely. We're going to have some backup as well in that Mirana. I mean, yeah, at the, at the most, the Mirana is their backup. They've got two sources of long-range initiation with the disruption, with uh, the clockwork and the Mirana, but... So, you I know, know they could... I, I still feel like they should have picked a slightly more all-in push lineup in this particular game. They, they could do this two ways, actually. I, I mean, if they've been working and there's a sense of synergy between the team, they could run an aggressive try. Uh, clockwork checking the Mirana, not too bad. You know, I just realized Viper applying the break on the floor remaining. means that the Beastmaster aura is going to be disabled, the Juggernaut crits are going to be disabled. How long does that last? I mean, listen. it lasts 8 seconds. You can spam it every 5. Okay. As long as you have enough mana, you're always going to have it on the floor. <coughs> Viper's one of those heroes that by, I think by the 8 or 10 minute mark, he's going to have like a mana pool of like 4 or 500. So. Approximately four or five times he can spit down that uh, nether toxin unless he's going to use a couple of poison attacks as well. Anyway, this game is going on the way to the team that just tuning in once again. You're watching Marksman versus Sheffields. And uh, it is the first game of the U-Cypher League on the new patch. Can't wait to see how this is going to play it, out, man. Yeah, it's literally the first game, uh, the first official tournament game in India on the new patch. And uh, Sheffield as well as Marksman, they're possibly setting the trend as far as Prepare the meta is concerned in India. Who Early smoke coming up from Sheffield. I really it's like this move because Admiral. you spawn with the TP, but the TP has a 70 second cooldown. So it's going to be really important to pop that smoke early on and get the wards placed. You drop wards, you're going to reach there before them, and you're probably going to see where Pashu places his own ward. This means that they're going to get a D ward, and now D wards are worth a lot more. If I'm not mistaken, getting the enemy observer leads to 100 gold as opposed to 75. So, I, I really like what Shazels have done here. I'm going to be a bit uh, nitpicky here and call out Khans for a minor mistake he's made. He put the town portal scroll in his backpack, which extends its cooldown a little bit. Yeah. Um, I know it was for free and all that, but he could have swapped out a clarity potion for it, especially when he's got no spells kicked up. Has he got the ward planted? Yeah, he's planted down the ward. Okay. I, I really hope battle. it's not his ward that gets rewarded. And, and now he knows that Pashu's probably going to drop a ward somewhere in lane. He should get the D ward off. He's going to be fine. 
the dive got a mid ball ward as well. So Khans pretended like he was planting the ward somewhere in this general area here. Pashu might be baited into thinking that the sentry deserves to be planted somewhere here. Neat move coming from Khans though. Well, good stuff. Mind games. Yeah. He's also gonna get the off the bounty. Apparently it's no longer viable for the middle lane to go for fear of missing out on the creep block. So what's really interesting is that if you take a look at the offlane shrine, it's almost equi uh, the dire offlane shrine and the mid offlane uh, uh, the radiant offlane shrine. Uh, it's it's almost equidistant from the mid lane and the offlane. And um, yeah, th this, this is gonna cause a lot of fights in this PUBG. This is gonna cause a lot of cause a lot of fights in uh, PUBG. I mean, when, when we're going to be playing party MML at night, I'm not going to be going off lane if you go to the mid lane, that's for sure. So. Well, top lane is going to be a tri lane oh, okay. coming out. And a, so, this is a huge lane. advantage for Martin because the safe lane creep spawn a lot closer to the safe lane tower. But Marksman have noticed that Earthshaker can block the creep wave with the Fisher. And this means that Red is going to get a lot more EXP than any other off laner should. If you take a look at Khan, oh, I got much tougher time. Yeah, that, that, that's not how you do it. That's absolutely not how you do it. In fact, this isn't, a, isn't even a lane composition at all at the moment. I mean, yeah, up until Disruption gets to level 2 and has the cogs. How do you make anything happen? And even I, when you have the cogs, I think you need ice part. You, you, you need ice part to get things started and then battery assault. So look at this. Khans is having a much harder time. He hasn't uh, got a single point uh, in terms of EXP. Well, if I'm not mistaken, Reds is off to a better start. Mid lane. How's it going? How's that Nether Toxin, uh, Nether Toxin playing out? Well, he hasn't scaled it up just yet, so we haven't found out. But he's picked up the corrosive haze, which now has a couple of changes to it as well, right? No. So it slows any enemy that, that damages it in a 1400 radius, apparently. Okay. <coughs> um, it seems as if they're prepping for a gank in the mid lane. Uh, this is when it's uh, most likely to happen or it's possibly just the clockwork trying to steal the enemy bounty instead. I think that's what he's going for. So, bounty. Another Red was a bit slow to get there. Yeah. So Red's hit two. Can we take a look at Khan in terms of EXP? How's he doing? He's just the lane. He's going yeah, to, he, he hasn't he's got a single point level of EXP one. just yet. It just goes to say how hard the off lane is right now with where the creep spawn. And um, yeah, Khan's, he's jungling without an iron talent. So Dota one. <laughs> I mean, he could have gotten the Quelling Blade at least, but it looks like he's opted to pick up the Ring of Protection instead. His Observer Ward, while it has been placed, isn't really helping his case. If I'm not mistaken, Khans has made a boo-boo here because the Ring of Protection is available at the side shop. The Sage's Mask isn't. This is the first. Disruption just walks up and right-clicks Sark. That Take some balls of steel, man. I have to say, walking up to a Viper and just right-clicking him close to his tower. Yeah, it's not too bad. He forced out a TP, but Itachi God hasn't yet revealed his position. Uh -huh. And we're one minute away from night time. If they try to force the issue on the Viper, they could get badly punished. I, I mean, at this point, it just seems like Marksmen are the ones in the driver's seat, but the gold advantage still lies towards the shared bills. And that's mostly because of the Juggernaut who's free farming on the top lane. And to a certain extent, the Mirana, who's doing okay versus the Viper as well. Mm -hmm. While Earthshaker may be staying alive on this top lane and getting EXP, he's not getting any farm. Yep. Khans has actually gotten a little bit of uh, EXP going his way under his tower and he's last hitting quite well here as well. He's up to 5 CS. Yeah, a bunch of those come from the jungle. But mid lane, disruption goes in. He's got the battery assault, takes an immediate nuke from the Night Stalker who's pushed back from his Viper thanks to the cogs. The arrow connects, dual breath as well. They're bringing down this bird and it's another bird who does it. Opas goes first blood. Itachi God can only watch his teammate die. Well done there. Cutting yeah. the Viper before he gets well to the Well-timed gank as well. I mean, you have to shut down that Viper early on because that's when he's the most efficient. Mm -hmm. If you can take away his... You can take him out of his playground and force him to play that slow mid-game phase, life gets extremely difficult for him. Anyway, Mage for now. He's got two points in the Spectral Dagger and he's picked up a Vitality Booster. Once he gets that Vanguard online, it's going to be a tall order killing him off, especially with the lineup that Shirdils are packing. You know, they've got a lot of stuns and lockdowns coming out, chain stuns possibly with a roar into an arrow, etc. But they don't really have too much damage when they've got the stuns kicking in. That might be their undoing versus the Spectre. Mm, yeah. Well, it's night time and Itachi God is running after Khans, doing a fair bit of damage with his boots of speed. Picked up, actually sending him all the way back. 
to the fountain. Yeah, good stuff coming up from Khan's and Itachi God as well. Khan's is at the TP. Itachi God didn't want to commit the new for fear of Khan just keeping away from his face and both just ran away from each other eventually. In fact, if Itachi actually had an Orbo Venom there, I think he might have been able to actually score the kill on Khan's. So, I don't know why Khan went for that Ring of Protection. Uh, yeah, the Ring of Protection because you cannot buy a Sage's Mask from the side shop if the intention was to push and he wanted to upgrade it into a Basilius or something of that nature. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sold on that as a starting item just yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can agree with you. I'm not entirely sold on that either. I, what do you it's build into? Um, what? I, I'm wondering. Does he need the armor? Anyway. Well, Red, he's uh, going for that Fisher spam time and again on this top lane. He's up to 9 CS now and he started to outpace that uh, Beastmaster. But here comes the Cavalry. Rival's going to get the cogs along with Disruption. Or rather, Disruption gets the cogs along with Rival and they score a kill on Red. Just when we thought that Red might be doing okay, he gets punished for overstepping past the river. Marksman. Yeah, Disruption. I mean, every time he's moved to a lane, he's ensured that a kill... Uh is uh, secured and uh, Opa also joining him. Good stuff coming up from Sheridan's. They're popping. We used to once be the mid shrine. I don't know what you call this anymore. This is Have you noticed that it's going to be so much more difficult to deal with those ancients? The tormentors or prowlers or whatever you call them. Why so? Because you don't have that shrine, so if there's stacks. Huh. That's true. And I think that's the reason why they moved the damn shrine away. They yeah. didn't want people uh, ancient farming. Because Sven Pickers. Anyway, Itachi God, he's laughing about something that we seem to have missed. <laughs> Off he goes. Disruption does TP into the bottom lane and Mage. He's being slowed, but he's got a Vanguard, man. He's not dying here. Yeah. If you cog him in, he just Spectral Daggers and runs straight through it. I I like how Spectre's uh, got things started in terms of item uh, in terms of item choices. She's got the Vanguard. The Viper is uh, naturally tanky somewhat and should be getting items if he just keeps farming away in the mid lane. So, even if Sheridan's want to push, I, th I think that the Spectre and the Viper can just run right at them. Okay. This Ice Path though. Just a casual Ice Path, thrown on the floor, that to a level 1 Ice Path. <laughs> Zark, he's got 2 points in that Corrosion skin, so he's okay for now. He's allowed to tank up those uh, Star Storms coming out from Mamacita. Mm -hmm. I mean, leaps, he's yeah, using those charges. leap charges quite efficiently now. It's a little bit worrisome when you try to go up against a Mirana with leap charges. But we hold that thought for later because right now at the bottom lane, Khans is going to be going down. Opa does come in while Mage is now trapped between a rock and a hard place. Gets caught with the Ice Path Rival, has the Omni Slash but the Spectre uses the horn and makes a break for it. While the Itachi God Night Stalker makes it out as well. Where the hell did the Spectre go by the way? Alright, it was in mid. I mean... It just goes to show how huge the change to the shrine position is. Since you don't have a shrine next to the tier 1, not exactly next to the tier 1, uh, you can't just TP in quickly. I, I don't even know what that is attempting here. But yeah, since there's no shrine next to the off lane, you, you can't TP right away. It's not oh. going to be instant. Uh, okay. Echo Slam. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not even sure he's going to get the kill. He might get the kill, but he's also going to end up dying. The cogs are there. Red barely ends up surviving. Yep, he did manage to change aggro at the tail end of things there. That's going to be the second kill coming on the board for the Marksman. They're now fighting back hard. They're taking some pressure on their bottom tier 1 tower, which is what Sheridan's lineup is meant to do. They need to take tower after tower and give up as less as they possibly can. And it looks like they're not going to sacrifice their own tier 1 tower on the top lane for it. Yeah, Spectre is just plain off a lip pushing. Uh, there's not much the Spectre can really do when... I, I don't think she can even attempt to make a trade. Shadil's just going for the tier 2 tower here. Oh, uh, wow, okay. Everyone's disconnected. Good timing on the pause there. Yeah. You've actually disconnected as well. I hope this is not a remake. Okay. You no, it shouldn't be. you still got three heroes sitting in yeah, there. Yeah. So probably like one line that went down and the backup line should bring everyone back online. So Shadil's are pushing. Marksmen are attempting are attempting to turtle to some extent. You got Spectre just dodging these early fights, uh, trying to push out the Radiant Safe Lane Tower. Huh. Roshan is going to be a huge point of contest, and I, I, I think 
that when you have a vision hero like the Clockwork and the Night Stalker, what's really going to make the difference is the wards. And if you take a look, you no more got that cliff ward near Roshan. That, that, that ward spot's been eliminated. Are you referring to this one? Yeah. Okay, wait, hold it's, on. I mean, there is a cliff. It's just, it just looks like it's a little lower down. Oh, okay. No, it's not oh. a cliff ward. Yeah, it's, it's just like a small spot over there. Did he eat the trees? Because... Wait, wait, hold on. That... No, I don't think I he's eating checked. the trees. I checked today morning. Anyway, I could be wrong. But, but yeah, they've removed the cliff. It's, it's not a cliff anymore. You still get a decent amount of vision. And um, it's going to uh, <coughs> help both teams control Roshan. Zark, um, has he started putting more and more points into that Zark, nether toxin yet? Um, has he started putting more and more points it. into that nether toxin yet? It is... Uh, one point in it. It is uh, a ridiculously good skill to have, especially against the kind of lineup that the Sheridans are running. I mean, he did get the break kicking in, so I guess that's probably why he's one for it, right? Just one point in it will disable the auras. Problem is, it's not very efficient to just put one point in it because the mana cost on successive levels doesn't increase, which means it still costs the same amount of mana, but it's going to do a lot more as long as you put points into it. But I guess so. You it think is, it's, be it's better to put more points into it? It is, yeah. Yeah. But uh, I, I think that I, I'd say that it really depends on your objective, right? If your objective is to push and chase, um, poison attack is the way to go, along with the corrosive skin. If your objective is to stall a push, it's another toxin. And in this case, I think it needs to stall pushes. Right. Well, still got a pause coming out here. Neither side hitting the resume button just yet. They're just checking the tech issues before we can get the game back on the way. But as things stand, it is Shadil with a very minor lead in terms of net worth, a very minor EXP lead going the other way in favor of the marksman. It's too soon to tell who's coming out on top. We're just 8 minutes and 47 seconds in. And uh, my money would still be on the Sheerdils if they play their cards right. Yeah, I, I want to say this is... Uh, I mean, it started off as if it's a game that Sheerdils could easily win. But I, I've noticed this pattern time and time again that Indian teams really struggle to go high ground. They... they the lack of communication and poor decision making starts to kick in. They face all sorts of problems. They go for kills they shouldn't. Yeah, They're out of position. I, I've seen this time and time again. Ending a game cleanly. That's something we see way too often. Yeah. We've seen it in the U-Cypher League as well, right? We've seen teams like Crusaders struggling to end on high ground. We've seen Yodas do it as well in the past. Yakshas as well has had trouble going onto the high ground every now and then. It always feels like teams Stop. are playing a bit too safe. Pardon? It always feels like teams are playing a bit too safe. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you, 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 you they're, notice they're them going into the pit, going for the lead, safe rush, safe for the wrong team. things. Yeah. I mean, playing safe is not bad. If you're a spectator, you shouldn't be at the enemy tier 3 and tier 4. But when you need to push, you need to push. And right now, the Shadows, they are pushing. It's best without a blink tag on the Earth Shaker. I mean, he's going to try his best for the Fisher to ward off this push. But the creeps, uh, they're just attacking harder for the Space yeah. Master Dora. Red by himself, walking ahead as if he has the end of the But he's not by himself. Oh, great he ice path. In the vicinity. The ice path will hold them off. But Khan glimpses back. He really doesn't want to be here. He'll summon the Hawk, he'll summon the Bow. But both of them are just a little bit of extra gold. And Itachi, as well as the rest of the Markman, Hold off the push for the time being. The glimpse just catching him with his pants down, sending him all the way back near the tier 2 tower with the rest of his teammates were there. A good attempt from the Jakiro did come out there. Opa did drop the ice path, caught three heroes with it. But what's a level 1 ice path really going to do? And especially when you're trying to run away and not turn the fight around. What uh, Marksman need at this point is to find pick off after pick off, and that's exactly what, it, what they're doing. Um, if they can manage to cruise into the mid game when the push, when the real push comes out with a few more items than their counterparts, I think they'll be the ones to uh, turn a team fight in their favor and eventually, slowly but surely, take the game back. But if uh, Shadows can find their stride, if they can group up as a unit, get that level six from the Beastmaster, go hunting with a primal road, transition it into a tower, that's the way to go for them. Because their lineup isn't an all-out push, it's still a pseudo push coming out with the Beastmaster and the Jakiro and to a certain extent the Juggernaut. Clockwork and Miran are not going to add too much in that department. But they are taking a tier 1 on the top lane for free. 
They have extra money going into their pockets. Will help to soften the blows of the Spectres now. Stacking up here. She's got herself phase boost in addition to the Vanguard, by the way. So not only is she tanky, she's fairly mobile as well. And the Haunt is online if at all her teammates choose to go hunting. Yeah, what I'm looking for is Khan hitting 6, which needs to happen as soon as possible. Uh, I don't blame him, he did have a rough time in the lane. Uh, Red did do a lot better, as you can see. But as soon as he hits 6, I'm assuming Cheryl will try and pop a smoke and go searching for a pick off of some sort. Um, and hopefully transition that into another town. Can't. <laughs> He's just struggling, man. Yeah. Buy the damn Tomb of Experience and get it over with. Anyway, at mid, Mama Sita. He's been farming quite well, man. He's actually out farmed the Viper quite heavily with the Star Storm spam time and again. He's been willing to walk up to the Viper and tank a few hits so long as he pushes out the wave efficiently enough. Mm -hmm. He has that bottle regeneration. With the wave pushed out, he's been able to go for the runes every now and then. But for now, it looks like they've hit that timing window. Ah. And in the absence of a smoke, we're gonna see them do it this way. Going for the major kill, but Mage is getting on out of here before they can get to him. A quick and clean escape by the Spectre. We'll see her continue to farm. And it's not like there's a tier 1 tower to take on the bottom lane either, so this is wasted time and effort coming out from Shade Bills. And now they don't have the Moonlight Shadow as a means of dodging a bad fight. It is... Uh... Dyer's middle tower in. is under yeah, pressure. In. And uh, now the marksman pop a smoke of their own disruption. Going to break it. Is he going to hook shot in though? He's caught in the kinetic field. In fact, the kinetic field rip. And who is that? He's come on the ground. Not really catching anyone. There's the echo slam as well as the picture. They're trying to focus. Opa, Opa. He's going to end up going down. But that's an echo slam for a Jakiro. And he on committed, which is not yet resulting in any significant kill. They're chasing down disruption. Khan's caught in the kinetic field. Turns around, off the row. While Mama Sita brings down Pashu. They're focusing their attention on the Viper. But Mage manages to clean up rival with the a little bit of help from Zark. Zark control. He's got red nearby. Actually, the fish is blocking his path. And he does drop really low to the star storm, but nobody just finished the job. It's a two for one exchange. They get the disruptor, but they end up losing the juggernaut as well as the clockwork and the Jakino as well. A three for one trade actually with Shadels losing more than they got. Mostly because Itachi stopped the turnaround with his crippling fear. He silenced up the Juggernaut before he could commit the Omni Slash in the jungle. They focused down the Juggernaut and then they knew the fight was theirs for the taking. Now it made it's Opa. Once again he's caught out. There was a glimpse coming out from Pashu as well. And with the slows coming in, they might be able to secure the kill. But Jakiro is deceptive, deceptively tanky and he does back away. No hook shot for disruption. As Pashu should be feeling fairly safe on his high ground. Marksman taking minor victories in, over the last couple of seconds. Yeah, they did get a couple of key kills, but the shed is not deserved. They're just going to keep pushing. There's the uh, nether toxin and work on the And it's just going to be paid, but Opa with the liquid fire will ensure that the tower ends up going down. I mean, the only reason that Shedwells have the money advantage right now is because it's, of the towers. It's a minor money advantage. It's because of the towers, man, but. Now they're trying to play the vision game. At night with the uh, hawk scouting over the treetops, they're trying to make something happen here, but everyone is just going to be sick, sticking around and made under their towers for now. Except for Rival, who walks into Mage, committing an Omni Slash is a bad idea. Mage will not die. Yeah. Unrealistic kill uh, to even attempt in the first place. Mage just drops the dagger for security and backs off. Uh, Moonlight Shadow is available. Road is available. It's settled. Want to push and keep pushing and like to see them pop some moonlight shadow immediately and go hunting for a pickup. But right now it's Pashu that's going hunting. He's got the static storm at the ready as well if he wants to jump in on rival. Uh, rival is farming out and about in a very secure location. There They'll be a little disappointed with themselves. I mean, sure they got all the tier one towers at level one. But uh, beyond that, not really much to show for, not even a net worth advantage. And now it looks like the Juggernaut is in trouble. The crippling here, the static stop, they surrounded him and then eventually brought him down. But look at the Sheriffs, they're pushing the other edge of the map. TVs are coming in and it's Viper with that damn nether toxin. And Dakshi is leaving for Mama Sita. Mama Sita does have a couple of charges of leave. Dachi God is here as well, Opa with the liquid fire. An arrow onto the siege. 
focusing the tower. Zark wants to go away. Moonlight trying to commit it. Where's the detection? I don't think it's there. Itachi God just goes running in. And Mage at his own shrine. But look at this. Shed has done a fair amount of work. The Sentau comes running in. That's the level 4 Beastmaster, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he's got the Call of the Wild next time. random up. neutral at level 4. And there are a bunch of good ones. You got the Centaur, you got the Hellbear Smasher, is that what it's called? Yep. The Alpha Wolf. The Tomato. The Tomato. Right now, Shavedils are messing this up. I don't think they're getting these objectives like they're planning on. Um, time and again, you can see them going for a tier 2 tower. But what's the point when you lose your 1 position on the other side yeah, of the map? And lose a tier 1 tower after that. It's such a wasted amount of effort coming out from them. Rival dying there was ever so crucial. Because yeah. now that means the level 2 Omni Slash is going to take a little longer to come out. Which means that once again, the marksmen have the upper hand going into the fight. And guess what? They're hitting bigger timing windows. Yeah. Mage is close to his relic. And the Blink Dagger is on line for red we talked about how the earth shaker isn't really a way to stop the pushes because his blink dagger takes a while to come online but shadels barely pushed my idea of a push was attempting to take down all outer towers in the first 15 minutes of the game that's clearly not happened here and shadels are going to be paying the ultimate price for it Watch for Pashi using his tower as bait. He's gonna get the deny off on it. Captain does have a hook shot. His rockets and cooldowns are going to but they've gone in for the scepter. Blade Fury as well. She's dropping low. This could delay the relic. She haunts, but I'm not sure to win. Here comes Rash with the Echo Slam. It's on to do. The Fisher will secure the kill. On to the Fisher for the Moon, but the Omni Slash and secures something in return. But the Enchant Totem is there. Red secures the kill on the Juggernaut as well. Elsewhere, Mage ends up falling. It's a two for two exchange. They did delay the Spectre's Relic, but they ended up losing the Mirana as well as the Juggernaut. That was a disaster just waiting to happen. You went in on the tankiest hero on the top side who was... I mean, okay, never mind. Mage actually died on the bottom side near these neutrals. But on the top lane, they actually jumped in early on, expecting Red to not be in the vicinity. I don't know if they were caught off guard without his blink dagger, but they should have known he had it by now. Yeah. Hero. Gonna drop down an ice path in an attempt to retreat, but again, just disrespecting that blink and the mobility with the four staff on Zark. Red. They're probably gonna end up losing Opa as well. Zark, is he actually trapped what? there? No, yeah, he's fine. I mean, he's stuck, the, he's stuck in the trees, he's stacked by the poison. There was a nether toxin thrown out on the floor as well, but Opa's gonna survive thanks to that moonlight shadow. Viper's got the four staff as well, so the control coming out from the cogs means even less in these team fights. Beastmaster actually died to Pashu, and then Pashu ended up dying to Beastmaster, so they ended up killing each other off as well somehow. Not really sure how that happened. I don't know if the Spectre had a hand in it when the horn was kicked out earlier. Mm -hmm. but, so they uh, nearly taken down the mid tier too as well. I mean, they fought it uh, down a fair bit. They've got a good amount of vision across the enemy jungle. The problem is they aren't really capitalizing on this. And they need to really somehow halt the Spectre's gun. Spectre's in his chosen closer to the relic. It's a matter moment she'll uh, have the Radiance up and going. She's got the relic on She's got the relic. She's gonna have the Radiance. She's gonna have that evasion. Shadesils have missed their timing window. I've uh, suddenly changed my loyalties, man. I think the marksmen are gonna take it at this point okay. now. So the last time around the Shadesils played, it was against the Crusaders and the captain uh, Predicted that Shadows would win the game. I saw you talking to him earlier before the game started. Did he chip in with any predictions for this one? No, not really. Okay. Didn't hear any predictions from this time around. But I'm sure he's got the confidence in them. Because they did take down the team that was that we thought was significantly stronger for the yeah. time being, but anyway, here comes Rival looking for a freebie on Itachi. The Omni Slash is available and he'll spare no expense to smack him with it. The not, not at all worth. I mean, um, that. I'm not sure. Is the 20 minute the night time or is it day? Because if it's night, it's fine. It's gonna transition into the night time. Okay. Anyway, Shadows are working with the man advantage and they're gonna attempt to transfer the issue in the top lane. The good news for the marksman is that it's at full HP and they pop a smoke. Red has the Echo Slam in fact, they don't even need it. He's coming up with the Strike Cup. The Echo Slam to follow, Enchantor and Fisher, they've eliminated the Juggernaut. Elsewhere, Mage goes in. He's got the horn, but I'm not sure he's really chasing the horns all by himself. But Mage. Showing a little restraint, which is actually, ah, well, I said restraint. In fact, he just glimpsed on back. 
and they brought him down as well. So that was supposed to be a defensive hunt from what I could tell. I think I believe they went on him on the bottom lane and tried to score a kill. Yeah, but the hunt just gave vision and Pashu got the glimpse and they had the communication to change the targets and uh, secure a kill on the Beast Master. Well. That gives you a Radiance straight off the bat on Mage. That Radiance means good luck to the Jakiro and the Clockwork in staying alive in these next few fights. It's such a horrible place for them to be in right now on the side of Radiance because they're fighting against a Radiant Spectre and a Blink Earth Shaker. Itachi counters an offensive one with a defensive one of his own and that's going to keep him alive. As he sails back, oh the arrow almost tagging him. Mama Sita, so, a good attempt there. What, what did they pop the Moonlight Shadow for? Was it for Khan? I'm not sure. Beats me man. Anyway, Opa, uh -oh. there's a sentry that goes in, that wants to go in, but the ice path comes out. A Fisher was going to land, but Khan with the row controls the earth spirit. The dual breath is there. He's caught in the cog. Somebody forced him out of it, but he's been brought down and his killing spree taken away. The arrow comes sailing through. Rival with the blade fury. The ice path one connects. There's an offensive earn coming out from the die. They're trying to bring down this wiper who drops a little bit of nether toxin on the ground, but ends up going down. They managed to score two kills on two cores. This could open up Roshan or this could open up a tier 2 but share they are on the timer and they need to push for some sort of an objective or oh, they could actually go high ground with this they're still on really good amounts of HP. Lift the fire takes no ward. mana. Healing ward, like you said, is well, it's not available, but they've got yeah. the Omni Slash. Yeah. And if a stray arrow connects, this could be it. Fortification. Oh, he's gone in with the Omni Slash. You really have to. I mean, they're not trying the base, but he hesitated with the Blade Fury. And he's not going to get the hook shot out in the creep. Disruption. I they also got a glimpse off on the, on the Juggernaut, so Pashu might just score the kill on him by himself, but it's coming at the cost of a tier 3 tower. Shield builds have pushed. Taken a tower and now they're trying to escape. Opa, he's been trapped aside. He's gonna get that DP off. Is he arrow flies? Connects on the Night Stalker before he can get the void. Um, not a bad retreat at all from Shade Bills. I, I would have liked to see the Juggernaut play that a little better. The Omni Slash get the kill with the Blade Fury and then instantly DP out. That would be ideal. Haunt from the Spectre though. They've gone in the, on disruption. But a mage is he throwing this game now because the haunt was just not necessary there. Now Shade Bills can't. They're probably <laughs> going to end up losing him. It's Mid just side damage. Targets. Got, got one kill out of two, which isn't too bad. But. Yeah, if you take a look at the lineup on the side of the marksman, they're going to push, but it's going to be slow and painful. But and if they had, uh, uh, the, the bigger issue is that the haunt is down for 130 and the Beastmaster is back in 20. You literally just right-click the base at this point if you're on the side of Shade Dills, because you're not going to win a man fight versus the Spectre and the Viper. Especially not when an Earthshaker is just standing behind to jump in. They lose the mid-tier one, they pop the glyphs, the glyphs are special, so... I don't think the Shedders will be too disappointed with what they end up ended up losing. Uh, thanks to the Haunt coming up from the Spectre. Jakiro's got a Ghost Scepter, so that's going to ensure he stays alive. Uh, all in all, I, I think the Shedders are looking pretty good and it's time for us to rethink our opinions about this game. Maybe not though. We're still not uh, convinced by well, double damage Radiant Spectre. That's still a really scary proposition, man. Yeah. Anyway, smoke rotation coming out, giving the night time that vision advantage there. A four star offensively pop. Adios, amigo. That's a dead beast. Hold monster. on, that was a night time smoke rotation. How did the radiant see up the die cliff? I'm, I'm not sure. Did they drop the kinetic field formation? Night vision. The radiant walk. Does he get that much more vision? I'm sorry. Well, or must have been hunters the night time. Maybe, yeah. I mean, their smokes pop, so you immediately instinct instinctively yeah, pop a hunter in the night and move up, right? But yeah, I, I guess Khan's hesitated a bit. Disruption. He's going for the blade mail next. That's his next item of choice, and the right choice as well, up against that earth shaker. Not to mention the disruptor as well. I'm actually a little surprised he didn't go for it as his first item of choice. Hi. I wouldn't mind if he also considers a solar cast. Um, other than the troop strike that he get from the blood turn, I think the uh, solar crest as well as NKD are two sources of accuracy now. Mm -hmm. which, uh, yeah, it's a good way to deal with the radiant yeah. coming up. And, uh, I mean, if you, if you do manage to catch the uh, solar crest. It's not a short kill, but it's going to do some reasonable amount of damage. Here's the deal though. 
Shedda's lineup is so quick at taking objectives, and with the Roshan in their pockets, they might be able to ride the storm, which is the Spectre Horn. Getting that, getting through the Spectre Horn is enough incentive to go up onto the high ground and finish what you started. And we already saw a simple kill on the Viper and a simple kill on the Earthshaker, I believe, yeah. was enough to go high ground and take a tier three. The the, the barracks are not going to stand for much longer either. They've got to hold on to buybacks on the side of uh, Marksman. Red, going to split push for now, just buying time as his opponent, his allies will push down the middle lane as well. They're pushing two out of three lanes, while all they're getting on the side of Shazins is a tier two tower. This is a textbook moment in how not to execute a push yeah. from Shazins. They're pushing one lane which has a tower while they're giving up two tier twos. This is not a good play. Uh, but they're not they, stopping. They're going. To, this is an all-in push. push quicker. Let's see how the Nether Toxin really works when there's a push in coming in. Oh a little God. bit of damage. Mace is hanging around. He's got the horn, but the tier 3 is dropping with that liquid fire, with the seed creep and the healing ward. It's Red's turn to possibly get the fight started. It's still daytime. They need to watch for the arrows. Riding the needle there. Dark. I mean, Adam Nerves really catching up to him at land. The is is fallen, so that's two tier 3s. There comes the horn from Mace. Who's he really going for, though? It seems like he wants the focus. Stance, but there's an ice path. Mage commits the horn. Doesn't get too much done, but the glimpse is there. They've caught Mama Sita and Red Itachi God as well as Pashu surround him and bring him down. The Viper still trying to catch up with the rest of Shadows. Yeah, good. Oh, good look choice at this. Of, Red is the, oh, the Atlanta. Good choice of target selection there. They actually chose to go the, for the Mirana with a glimpse into the static storm, ensuring that those leap charges don't mean squat. Um, there's also the fact that the Juggernaut was the one holding on to the Aegis. A questionable choice if you ask me, but understandable if you're using him to just siege the high ground. Not so good on the retreat though. And on the trot, you're going to see uh, Marksman claiming another crucial kill with the Spectre Haunt committed fruitfully. That's going to be a Manta style coming out of the spec, and I do believe that's the right choice, especially versus the Jog. I'll take that. Just to deal uh, with both the Spectre as well as the Viper. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's great versus the Spectre, Viper as well as the uh, Night Stalker. But one interesting change to the Silver Edge in the latest patch is that it no, no longer reduction. applies damage reduction. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, top lane, they committed the Echo Slam. They won the Mirana. The Fisher's there. She pops the Manta style. Turns around to fight. She's manning up. She's got the Moonlight Shadow, but they have detection. Red dropping low. Mirana microing those illusions will get the kill and will leap away as well. They commit the Echo Slam and they end up losing the Earthshaker. They might end up losing a lot more, but the bounces were unlucky. They finally get the kill on Mama Sita, but Sheridan finds the Night Stalker in return, while Rival on the back lines goes for Pasha. They commit everything in the kitchen sink, and all they get is the Mirana. Buybacks on three, though. Um, there is a possibility of buying back and coming back to deal with this. So, I mean, that's the goal from your share deals. Yeah, they've got to go in, deliver some economic damage, go in, get some towers, get some buildings, force out some buybacks, possibly even force out a defensive glyph. If they can do that, I'd call it well worth their while. In fact, even with the buybacks, they've got no Echo Slam and no yeah, Haunt. They Perhaps they can just take the Aegis and walk away for free. Zark, doing what he does best, spitting Manik Chand on, on the fellow bird on the battlefield. Yeah. Rivals there on the front lines, the glyph not being used just yet. Now it's been popped, but no buybacks were committed there, or were they? Nope, looks expected to just respawn and comes to join the party here. Red with a beautiful Fisher splitting the wickets, catching two out of position, gets the kill on the Jakiro and takes down the Aegis on the Jug. Now Jug's been isolated and stranded on one side of it, pops the Blade Fury, makes a break for it, disabling or disarming the glimpse. He's still trying to make a run for it. Mage, though, even committing a haunt for this kill. He knows how crucial it is that he gets this kill on the Juggernaut, and indeed, they're gonna get it. Itachi's gonna be the one to claim the money for it. And with that, they'll barrel down a lane themselves. That was an Aegis fight that went in their favor. Ooh, nice four star. Yeah, that is the first star. Keeping the Spectre alive as she was turned uh, away from that arrow and away from the rest of the die. They still have the They're not done. They've got the void. They just need to dogs are there. They've probably got one in the cogs. If I'm not mistaken, that's the real Spectre, but disruption can't bear the damage. He's been brought down. The glimpse onto the Mirana. Excuse me, it was onto the Beastmaster. They managed to bring him down as well. And now it's the Marksman's turn to push. It's Mama Sita as well as the Jakiro. They've got the Gold Breath. They've got the Macropy as well, which I think they should commit. And in fact, Opa does end up dropping it on the floor. The creeps, they've been taken away. And Marksman, that push comes to a sudden abrupt halt. Does it though? Because they've got themselves five years on, on the field while there's three down on the side of Sheridan's. Tier 3 is supremely low. I think you just go for this if you're on the side of Marksman. 
This is your opportunity to kill the odds, open up the shrines, make them vulnerable inside their own base. You go for this if you're marksman. Uh, he doesn't have fire angle, so if the shape... Oh, that's not good news, but okay. The good post up. Go shape. Is Brenton going to go down? Yeah, Illusion Army. Illusion Army. Should do it. What? Never mind. 55 HP. Oh, okay. Oh, shot from destruction. He's managed to catch out the Spectre. The fish was there. A quick dagger to get away from the cogs. And Rival, he's still giving chase. He's got that Shadow Blade. Not sure if he has a Diffusible or Zombie any other Omni means slash, of blocking down the Spectre. Commit the Omni Slash. Red tanks a bit. Four stops out of there. But with the Blade Fury, they'll bring down the Spectre and take away a streak. They're chasing for Red. But Red, as that Blink Dagger, gets the hell out of them. It's really easy for Shazers to get carried away here and just try and do high ground. What you've got to remember is that the Spectre has the haunt after she buys back. Yeah. And you've still got the Echo Slam, the Static Absolutely. Storm available. This is not looking like a good fight for Shazers to take. They've got to slow down, move back, not go for this fight. They've got their tier 3 towers still standing. Look for a pick off instead. I'd like to see them see if just the Juggernaut. Use the blade oh, okay, that happens that if we all ball whole different freedom. ball game. Unfortunate that disruption doesn't have the clockwork hook shot available. Oh, they've got Opa with the glimpse, they're trying to focus him down, but look at that! Disruption with the hook shot! He's caught the disruptor as well! Well, elsewhere, Zark was focused and brought down. Parshu, he managed to drop the static storm, but it doesn't really connect on anyone. And Red's Echo Slam was a complete disaster! Was it? It actually caught a lot of heroes in the... Oh, well, it caught a couple of heroes in the back line, I mean, they did a fair bit of damage. Back. They only got the Jakiro and they've lost their melee barracks. Sheldon, I mean, they got what they wanted to. Spectre held on to a buyback, and now, without the disruptor, I'm not sure how they get them. They've got the horns coming in two seconds though. Horns back in two seconds. He's popped it. Here we go. Spectre entering the fray as well. It's actually God. He was a little low himself and had to turn around and run. While Sheridan, they're running. Mage actually haunts right in the middle. He's kind of isolated. Disruption. He's gonna catch him with the cogs, but the Manta Cell illusions are giving him a new one and will bring him down. But at the end of it all, as the dust settles, Sheridan ends up losing two. They get a lane of barracks and they walk away. I think it's completely fine. Yeah. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they also bought down the Wiper. No, they bought down the Earthshaker. Yeah, the Earthshaker bought back into that fight, so... Mamacita! Manta style in addition to that silver no, that's, edge. That's the Juggernaut. Yeah, the, Mamacita Oh, my bad. Gone. That's the Juggernaut. Mamacita's actually gone for Dragonlance over the Manta style. Hmm. Mixed feelings, but... No, I can agree with this. His objective isn't to fight heroes, yeah, it's to fight see. buildings. Mage is going to be happy that he didn't have to buy back there, but he's not going to be happy so so happy about this hole in his base. Mm -hmm. Red's been the biggest playmaker for uh, this yeah. game, I have to say. He's been the only one that's keeping them in this game for whatever reasons. But uh, unfortunately, there's only so much he can carry on his shoulders. Mm -hmm. What's the Viper looking at? He's gone for the Maelstrom to deal with the push coming in by the looks of it. I... Probably have liked to see a utility item like the Lincoln Sphere coming out here. That bonus bit of mana, mana regeneration, and of course the ability to block that primal roar. But yeah, I'd be a fan of the Lincoln Sphere and the Viper this game. I mean, he's not meant to be the hard hitter here. He's meant to be the one that uh, protects and you know adds utility to the fight. He's got his pipe complete, as well as a BKB on the Madonna. Maybe if Sevens just group up, I'm not entirely sure. I, I mean, it's going to take a huge echo slap. I think you're underestimating Mage a little bit, man. I mean, he didn't Mage? buy back. Spectre? Yeah, he didn't buy back in that last fight, so he's picked up something. What's he picked up? I'm not... Oh, he's, he's not picked up anything, actually. Okay. He's just holding on to the money. Yeah, he didn't buy back in the previous fight. He let his back go, but he respawned and... Uh, it managed to get a kill in response. Uh, I think it was in the top four. But yeah, share this, uh, I hope they're keeping tabs on Roshan. It is uh, daytime, so yeah, the hot hanging is under Rosh is about to respawn right away. In fact, 50 seconds, just less than a minute till the next Aegis is online. Schedules. They've opened up the shrines for the taking, and they're going to go and take him as always. The Roshan Shrine has already been taken out earlier on, so Shedrins have opened themselves a nice, comfortable situation to claim this next objective. Meanwhile, look at Khan's just providing valuable information. There it is, though. Mage with the heart. Life got significantly harder for Shere. They'll start to push high ground now, and I don't, I don't know if an Aegis and a Cheese will be enough for this. Mage. He's actually chasing Mamacita by himself, but Khans and Mamacita can't get this Spectre kill. 
bro, five second arrow. Absolutely not. not. I mean, they'll probably die in dispersion if they do that. Yeah. And you're fighting in the jungle where Desolate will kick in harder with yeah. illusions. You don't want to fight that at all. Aghanim's finished up on the Night Soccer as well, so they're going to have the positional advantage. I, I just don't see how Shade reaches the high ground. This is such a difficult job for them. I, I think to some extent, both teams are somewhat even. I mean, you've got the Hawk on the side of Shade. The yeah, is a problem. You've got, you've got vision reduction from the Night Stalker, though. I mean, they're definitely going to try with the Aegis, and this looks like it's not going to be contested by Itachi and his boys. I mean, when you've got an from the They won't be able to. I mean, even if they try to walk across the map with the smoke, they won't make it in time. They don't have anything to TP to. And the lanes are pushing in. They have to deal with this. The top lane is exposed, so those uh, siege creeps are going to do some damage on the buildings if no one gets in position in time. This is not a good move from uh, Marksman. They're just trying to YOLO push down a lane on the bottom side, but little did they realize they lose their, tier, their, their barracks on the top side as well. Mage, like we pointed out, he's not really the best at taking down buildings either. He's not the best, but if you keep him long enough to make it, it's that hard to surely get his get that building. I'm not sure if he's supposed to do that. He's got a horn to the ult lane. Now, it's not him fighting with a man advantage on the other side of the map. But yeah, I mean, Mage commits the horn to get out of there. He's on to the rival. Rival's got a silver edge and he's just running away. No detection on the Spectre. And horn wasted. Shadows. They've actually they've actually got eyes on the Spectre by the way. They popped a Moonlight Shadow and a Smoke and they've started to get in position. Rival unable to get in with that Silver Edge hit. It was on cooldown as Mage just moving up onto the high ground to farm. But are they going to chase the hook shot? Just narrowly missing and that sends warning bells sounding in the Radiant camp. But Shed is just giving chase. Red with the Fisher. He could turn around, eats that Omni Slash, pops and use. No defusal on the Juggernaut means the use is wasted. Excuse me, the Omni Slash is wasted. And there's the Echo Slash. They're controlling the Juggernaut. Juggernaut, Omni Slash wasted. Age is consumed. And he's fighting without two teammates. The Clockwork brought down. The Beastmaster brought down as well. Sure, they got the Earth Shaker. But can they possibly bring down the Spectre? Rival, as well as the Mirana, trying to bring down the Spectre. The break committed for the Spectre healing up. And now Mama Sita being focused. He Pops the cheese, wants to man fight this viper, but there's no way he can. He sees his target, manages to bring down Pashu, but it's Mama Sita versus the world, and Mage is more than enough for now. Way too easy for sh for uh, Marksman right there. Spectre's beyond tanky at this point. They have nothing to kill her off. A break is not, it's just not enough in the face of a Vanguard, a Heart, and a Mantis style. The illusion, sorry, the evasion from the Radiance doesn't get disabled by break. Um, break only disables passive skills, not passive yeah. items. So, not abilities and not items. items, so, yeah. I mean, Mage is in a very, very comfortable spot right now. So All the Silver Edge is doing is breaking the Dispersion. Desolate and Dispersion. And, yeah, and the Desolate, of course. So, I, I think the crucial mistake on the on the part of the Shadows in their previous fight was the Juggernaut committing the Omni Slash on the Earth Shaker without noticing that he has a new Scepter. So, Omni Slash was wasted in that fight. They seemed to get a support with their Omni Slash and... Yeah, that was just an How have they not taken this tower down yet? It's at 17 HP. Just blow on it. I think Mage can just walk up there and take a look, get that tower easily. But yeah, the Omni Slash was pretty much wasted in the previous engagement, and I mean, there's a Juggernaut Omni Slashing an Earth Shaker sauced up into the air, air with his own Cyclone. That's just easy setup for Pashu to drop a static storm on the ground. And there was nothing oh really man, they got tagged by a scan, so they're gonna bail on this gank as well. Unless the clockwork pulls off something miraculous. The bird in the way of that hook shot as well. Even if he did want to commit, he might have just clipped on the bird and not gotten anything done. Sheridan's not finding much joy with that last smoke. Mama Sita. He continues to farm on the top side and he's going for the MKB next, but the nerfed MKB, man, I'm not a real fan of it here. I, well, it's not a nerfed MKB, it's a changed MKB, and while yeah. the accuracy is definitely good versus the Radiance in Evasion, I just don't think he's packing enough of, of a punch. Because all it's really going to give him is attack speed and accuracy, whereas the attack speed component is coming in from Khans, the accuracy is something that could have been brought in with something as simple as the Solar Crest. Yeah. 
I mean, I, I'm not sure if the NKB is always uh, the best answer when you're lacking in damage anymore. It does give you that 75% accuracy, which is a lot, but the problem is not the radiance right now. In addition to that, it gives you plus 60 pure damage proc, and that procs every time you uh, proc accuracy, and that pierce and spell immunity. What a great! But there are lots more things the Milana could win right now. Maybe a straight up deadlift, uh, maybe a blood thorn? Yeah, I would like to see a blood thorn for that matter. Especially given the Spectre. Uh, she's got the Mantis there, but. Okay. No BKB on the Spectre set. In fact, she's queuing up a Scari. Oh, no severe lockdown from an Abyssal Blade right off the bat. I am a little surprised by that, actually. I mean, one way of looking at uh, the Scari in this new patch is the perks that all stats give you. So, yeah. agility gives you movement speed. Uh, but I'm not sure if that applies if it's not the primary attribute. The perks are only applicable to those that hold on to uh, an item that gives them their primary attribute as stats. Okay. So he's gonna get moves. I mean, you have a binder the size of my geography textbook in school, man. Open it up and take a look. Did you open your geography textbook? No comment. Rival, he did choose to pick up the Basher himself though, so we're looking at an Abyssal Blade coming out for the Juggernaut. Yeah, I can get behind the Abyssal Blade pick up the jog. Shazels, we hit that uh, proverbial calm before the storm where they're just feeling and doing nothing. But as they say, that disruption jumps in red. Isolated, caught out of position here, has the cog to push him back with the force up that actually worked in his favor here. No follow up coming out from Shazels, red bills, no haunts committed. Mage hits the reset button. Apologies, I was looking at the geography textbook, but yeah, uh, Hookshot committed, they failed to bring down the Earth Shaker. The clock were getting uh, a little underwhelming as time passes and everybody's picked up four staffs. Um, Shedil, they are working with a 4,000 network deficit and uh, they, honestly, they're hoping uh, for the marksman to slip up. It's uh, becoming harder and harder for them to close the game. They did use Aegis and Cheese the last time around and uh, both really did secure any objective for them. Mama Sita is trying to find the answer to this. This just spectrum. feels like the slow and steady decay on the side of Shade Dills. One by one, we're seeing marksmen just find pickups, dodging gangs, making all the right plays. They're going to smoke up during the daytime though. No darkness available. Mama Sita still has a leap charge if he wants to bail. That's not going to find anything. I think the only thing they have to deal with on the side of uh, Marksman is that the middle lane is consistently pushing in. But that's something that the Spectre can take care of quite conveniently for by himself and then haunt back into the fight. Rival, looking at the Spectre. Anti illusions are gonna block the entry for Shadeville's heroes, and that means that the Jog won't find anyone. Yeah, it's gonna take an arrow or a road if they hope to bring down the Spectre at all. They, they can't even bring down the Spectre illusions at this point. Um, Mama Sita has got the MKB complete. So, it's, well, for the first time in an indie tournament, we see the new MKB as well. Let's see if it's uh, going to be enough to deal with an overfarm spectre. We're they, also looking at the new Necro books, by the way, coming out. Uh, so, know. they do purge. They don't do. Uh, the ranged uh, Necro minion doesn't have mana burn anymore. He has a purge, which only affects heroes, enemy heroes. That's an interesting mechanic. Does it dispel or is it one of those fake slow purges? <laughs> well, he's also going to go for the butterfly next, but looking at the MKB on Mamacita, he should consider it. Okay. I'm holding my breath here because disruption he misses on the hook shot, but he can't miss a primal roll without a Lincoln Spear, Omni Slash, Macro Fire. Look at that! They threw everything at him and he just lifts his skirt and runs. The heart region is gonna kick in again. Mama Sita even pops a BKB next to him. They've done nothing. While committing everything on a Spectre, he's trying to leap away to safety now. Zark's on one side. He's out of leap charges and he's out of life. Red will ensure that he goes down. Opa comes in with the ice path. Really, if you're on the side of the marksman, you just right-click the fountain from wherever you are and hope that you finish this game right away. <laughs> Mage was just unstoppable there. They couldn't do anything to him. 
a primal drawer, a macro pyre, an ice bath, an omni slash, everything in the kitchen sink at his head. And he, just, he just doesn't die. I think you do get the stats from the ultimate orb for every attack. I mean, so if you if you build an ult talisman on the Nazi leader, you're still gonna get spell damage. Spell damage, right? It's pretty much the same. I mean, his magic resist hasn't moved. And I'm pretty sure only if you're an intelligence hero would you get magic resist in okay. case. Okay. So, pretty certain that uh, it's only for your primary attribute. I mean, I, I don't think that's why he went for it. I think he just went for general tankiness. Uh, I'm still, uh, hold on. The push is coming up from the mark. They're just pushing down the mid lane. The macro is there with the ask by the Zealous Ice Path. That ass path. But Mage focusing the barracks here. Opa trying his best to hold them off. The barracks are falling. The liquid fire as well as the dual threat only tickles. Yeah, the Shotsin goes in. That is bold, but he's not going to accomplish anything. Mage takes the barracks guys, and guys, runs away. He could turn around right stop now. Stop it, guys. And he's going to do just that disruption. Well, he's been caught by the Spectre. The desolate damage hurts. He bought his back as well. But I think the shed is have been outdone by Spectre. Itachi God is running at them, they don't have detection. Here comes the Wild Axes. They've got the row, they're focusing the Spectre, the Mana Bird is there, but he's got his friend, and that friend is up with the Nether Toxin, with the Poison, bringing them down one by one. He moves on to Khans, he scores the double, and now he's focusing Mama Sita. Mama Sita, thank God he has leap charges, because he just used two of them, hoping to run away. They're screaming on the stage, they're running after the Shedil. Red has lost his cool and calm, and Shedils have possibly lost the game. Another macro fire coming after Mopa. Mage, he's focusing the tier falls. Share this with the lineup that was meant to push, but they're being pushed back into their own fountain. Here comes Just Ivan. He's move. got the silver edge. The Omni slash pushed him, and Mage with a heart pushes them back. Disruption can't find the hook. Thank God Rival has a glimmer cape on his side. Red goes in with the Echo Slam. It catches a bunch of them. They scream once more on stage, but what's the point? There's only a tier 4 that stands, and the fountain as well. Rival will fall once more. That's no target of 107 seconds and marksmen they're on the verge of cementing their lead here at the U Cypher League. Mage can't be taken. If five heroes couldn't kill a Spectre, how can three? Disruption, however, can't take solace in the fact that he can kill the Earth Shaker. Red has gone quiet for a bit and now it's their turn to focus a Spectre with the liquid fire. They're gonna well, they're gonna tickle her a bit. Mama Sita, I mean They're not they're not killing. They, they're trying. Look at the dispersion da dispersion damage just working on disruption. He's gonna go down on the side. Mama Sita, he's been right clicking him for the last 10 minutes and nothing has happened. Mage is still alive, comes and kills Mama Sita. Mama Mama Sita buys back and finally they're gonna kill the goddamn Spectre. So Spectre can respawn by refresh and come back if you want. Is he buys? I don't know. I mean they killed everyone on the side of Marksman because they decided to go for the end of the game instead of just backing into the next set of barracks. But maybe that come ba comes back to hurt them but it did cost three buybacks. So it took eight heroes to finally bring down the Spectre. <laughs> Essentially, that's what happened. And no wonder she's so respected here at the U Cypher League. She's an uh, absolute pain to deal Look, with. Look, let's be honest. If you give, I don't know, an ancient apparition this kind of farm and this kind of time, <laughs> it's probably going to be respected as well. Yeah. This is more about Shedils not pushing with their lineup. Mama Sita, that MKB is really just a piece of jewelry at this point. It's not adding any value to her life. We saw what it did to the Spectre, or rather what it didn't do to the Spectre. Now she's trying to make it work on the barracks. They're going to fortify for this as well. Itachi's just going to run at him. BKB pop. What are you doing, Mama Sita? He wants the barracks so desperately. He's going to get it. He's going to get it. I mean, Red doesn't want to commit the extra slam for just the corner. Okay. Gets the many barracks. Why not? Three barracks? Okay. Wait, that's not the way you play it versus a uh, lineup that's meant to push. Yeah, and look at that. Just double Siege Wagon, which now spawns the 30 minutes instead of 40. And uh, connect the minions as well. They're no gonna... one bought back. They were just holding on to their gold. What? Yeah, are you going to so... take it to your grave after I mean, if they have bloody gold in there, they can just bust down me and uh, take the energy from. Look. Shadows are capitalizing on the mistakes that they made now. Marksman got hockey. They started hollering like little kids on the stage. <laughs> and they decided they're gonna try and end the game. But turns out three buybacks and eight heroes later, they end up dying. The entire team gets wiped. But Shadows gets a team wipe, gets a lane of barracks and a Roshan. That's and huge! And this is Roshan number three, which comes with that freaking refresher of. Or who has a charge? Yeah, it's on the beast master. Uh, beast master. So it's 
Can you spawn two, two necro minions? I you believe no. Sets of no, I, 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 you can only have one on the field at any given yeah. point in time. Yeah, you you can't. Otherwise, Tinker would be buying necro minions. But yeah, that's two primal rows, uh, two axes as well, which is a little bit of pure damage, which can help. Which got them the kill the last time with the spectre. Uh -huh. uh, does it spawn another? I believe it should. It used. It to. used to. I don't know if it does now actually. Okay, so that's going to be a lot of units. A lot of units on which Red has to connect the perfect hacker slam. Uh, How the... did Marksman? Oh, uh, my head hurts thinking about these issues sometimes. Why didn't a single hero buy back to protect their barracks and hopefully thwart off an agent? I don't know, but I mean, one way of looking at it is if we bought back and we died, we could have lost. But I think if the Spectre bought back, the Sheriffs would have lost. It, it really was that simple. Well, buy back on the Disruptor, man. <laughs> I mean, Red had buy back. Um, I'm not sure about the Disruptor. I think the Viper had buy back. But yeah, anyways, they're on the, they, they popped the smoke down the hunt. Mage has the hunt. Uh, Sheriffs have to somehow just hold on to this fight. We talked about the evasion on the side of the of the Radiant, but the Dyer's picked up a butterfly on that uh, Juggernaut as well. Yes. There's no accuracy, there's no true strike coming out on the side of Marksman. That could cause them some problems. That's a tritting, dodging Juggernaut with an Abyssal Blade for the bashes as well. Mm -hmm. I'd be worried if I was on the side of Marksman here. So, and you got to remember that right now it's this Shadows that has the Rax advantage. They got yeah. two lanes of barracks. Yeah. They went for tier fours instead of going I for barracks at once. They could still win by ratting if they rat. If you think they could still win by ratting. I think uh, the marksmen have given away their position. Yeah, the rocket player should about do it. Uh, they're going to go for the throne. Shadows should go for the throne themselves. If this was a throne race. Shadows take us. Oh, no, I don't think they should be throne racing. At least marksmen shouldn't be throne racing. They've got a lot of damage to work with. Nama Sita. It's a beating here, they will pop the Moonlight that's Shadow, but look that's at this. Mage, he's still going forward. He's just that's ensuring wrong. that he does what he can here. There's roll number one, Khans is going to TP out. The there's a lot available. And yep, like you said it, the throne is happening. Opa, he's going to glimpse, get glimpsed all the way back where a sentry awaits him. But it's a dire sentry, so they didn't quite see him in time. And now the horn comes up. The big of the Mirana getting annihilated. That's a dive back on the Mirana and the Zafiro. And now it's a use to hold the Beastmaster in position. He will reflect, throws down that that uh, primal roll and then the army stack to do some work. You do bring down three on the side of the but it's a triple set for me. You still got a lot of history to work with. One second, he just made it as well as uh, the knight. I'm not sure that's going to be enough. He's surrounded by the juggernaut as well. Counts as the disruption. Khan, I mean, he doesn't have the rope to Rival has the butterfly. The nuke is there, but Rival, he's got the ages. He's going to respawn. Nate has an ultra kill, but can he kill the Juggernaut once more? Can Rival really just catch up to him? Maybe with the flutter, but here comes the Viper. He's almost done enough. He's forced to pop the Blade Fury. The Wild Axes come out. The players are louder than me, and I'm the bloody subcaster. What is going on? They're focusing the throne. The glyphs come out. The glyphs come out. God, he's in control, he's being brought down. Mage focusing the throat, Zark distracting Khan. Khan silent, Juggernaut focusing the Viper. Wow. He comes out, but the throat is being brought down. I mean, I, I get that marksmen are really happy and they're celebrating on stage and such, but... Yeah.